so you've covered now the speaker cables. How about you cover now some regular audio cables? You mean like audio interconnects and mm -hmm. you know just stuff that you use for line level connections? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Well, basically the same pseudoscience that goes to speaker <laughs> cables also carries over to the audio cables. The companies don't miss a beat in terms of trying to get you and get your high uh, your high um, spending habits. Yeah. With their theories. Well, they, they want to make you lose weight, you know, in your wallet, that is. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, you know, I've got some examples here of some cables that I'd like to show you. So this is the common cable that comes free with a, you know, when you buy a Blu-ray player at Walmart. Oh, uh, the box, yeah. That's yeah what... It's called patch cord. Right. I don't really recommend this unless you're just plugging it into your TV or whatever. Uh, very low quality, very minimum amounts of shielding. The video, for example, this is only composite video, so it won't even do HD. Um, it's not even a 75 ohm cable. So mm -hmm. you need to have, for video, at least for component video, for high def, you should have a 75 ohm cable. Um, so it impedance matches and you, you, you minimize reflection. Mm -hmm. And you basically transmit the signal as, as best as you can. So right. definitely toss this or use it for like a bedroom TV. Don't recommend it. Out of here. <laughs> you know, Gene, for, for those that are not as technical, you know, minimum shielding, what does that mean in terms of performance? It means that you're going to get interference mm -hmm. from other cables that are close by, or you're going to get interference from any type of anything that's generating RF in the room, right. radiated conducted emissions. Mm -hmm. So shielding is definitely important for interconnects, especially if you look at a typical rack like our audio system. It's got hundreds of interconnects plugged mm -hmm. in, and they're all pretty closely spaced. And we'll do a video on that as well on how to mitigate these kind of problems. But basically, you get a cable like this. Uh, this is a Belden cable. Blue Jean sells it again. This is the pre cream of the crop cable. I know it doesn't look like much, but this is Belden 1694. It's tested out to 5 gigahertz. Wow. Okay, so it could fully pass a 1080p signal for hundreds of feet where an HDMI cable couldn't even do. And the great thing about this cable is it's got a double foil, I'm sorry, double braided shield and a foil shield on oh, wow. it as well. Okay. It's a coax. It's a 75 ohm characteristic impedance cable. The connector on the end is a Canari connector. Canari makes some of the best connectors in my opinion. Uh, it's near 75 ohm. You can never quite get a 75 ohm B, um, RCA connector, but it's as close as you're going to get. The dielectric on it's nicely spaced. Now, this is an overkill cable. This is the cable I say that can be used for anything. If you're using it for video, video is the hardest thing to transmit line level. If it works for video, it's going to work for audio. So this cable will work for all your applications. But the downside of a cable like this is it's very stiff. Right. It's not flexible. And these connectors are very long. So if you're trying to fit behind a subwoofer, it's kind of tight. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So now... Belden offers cables that aren't quite as well shielded as this one, that aren't quite as heavy gauge as this one. I think this is like an 18 gauge ca cable, which is oh, very thick yes. for interconnect. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So they offer cables that, for shorter runs, that will work just as well, that are more flexible. You don't have to have this big connector. But then I have another example here of a cable that's pretty. And this is from SVS Sound, or SVS, the guys that make subwoofers. And this is their um, their cable for subwoofer connections. Wow. Pretty cable, based on the same principles as the Belding. It's a shielded cable, um, coax, and it's got a nice connector on the end. Looks more flexible, too. Very flexible, and you know what? It's Considering how beautiful this cable is, it's only 30 bucks for a 2-meter uh, run. It's a lot cheaper than some of the esoterics that don't even measure as good yeah. as this. <laughs> The wonderful thing about it is you go to their website or you go to Blue Jeans website and you get all the measurements of the cables. They tell you the characteristic impedance, they tell you all the parameters. Whereas a lot of the exotic companies, it's all magic. Can't measure it. Can't measure can't it. Can't analyze it. You just have to take our word that it's designed to work. Take it on faith. <laughs> right. So yeah, I mean, you know, there are other other types of cables you could use. I don't have any examples here, but for audio cables, you could use twisted pair. Twisted pair is good for um, for minimizing uh, low frequency noise okay. and coupling and stuff like that, but it's not really very well designed for high frequency, which is why I pretty much always recommend coax over anything else. So if you get a coax cable that has shielding, at least two, two layers of shielding, you're good to go. If you want to dress it up, you know, I'm not, I'm not telling you you shouldn't spend a lot of money on cable or what I call audio jewelry, 
just make sure you buy cables that are well engineered. Right, uh, and just a cost-effective buy too, you know. It's like the science has to be there. Yes, you know? exactly. Any, any specific gauge for this uh, kind of cable that you prefer? Well, like I was saying, the extreme case was that 18 gauge coax mm -hmm. for long runs. If you're doing shorter runs, no, it doesn't have to be that thick. It, you're not transmitting high current, you're just transmitting low voltage signals, so the gauge of the cable is really not as important, especially for the shorter runs. Okay, cool, great. Well, thank you so much, Gene. People, you heard the man. Uh, you've had over here a whole bunch of knowledge that he has dropped today about uh, the myth about uh, cables. And we would like to invite you to go ahead and visit uh, audioholics.com where you can find tons of articles that go ahead and just really pursue the truth about audio. I mean, you're not going to find any kind of BS in this site. Uh, and furthermore, you can also sign up to the Audioholics newsletter where you'll be able to get the newsletter at least once a week and you get like any sort of new article that is uploaded, new videos and tons more. And for doing so, you also get a free... Um, top picks this year for of the 2014 picks, right Gene? We're excited about that. We just released our 2014 top AV gear picks and they are hot products in there. They don't cost you an arm and a leg, but they're based on what we've reviewed and what we've looked at. And yeah, I think it's a great read for anyone that's looking to buy new gear this year. Awesome. Well, that's it for today. And again, thank you for uh, taking a look at this video. Feel free to go ahead and rate and comment uh, and share with uh, your friends via social media. And uh, until next time, I'm Hugo Rivera. And I'm Gene Della Sala. And keep listening. <laughs>